Um, as um, I mentioned to um, some of you, I was in Turkey in uh, July for a week, uh, for actually two weeks. Uh, it was, um, uh, I went there um, on assignment and then um, um, I took a week off and um, stayed um, in my hometown. And um, because of the pandemic, uh, there was not much to do. So um, I wanted to go um, to the Southeast and visit um, this famous Göbek de Tepe that everyone is talking about. Um, of course, before going there, um, I had been uh, watching um, a lot of uh, videos, talks, um, presentations, lectures by the excavators, um, not anyone else. Um, there, I knew um, there was serious work um, going on and people uh, were uh, making um, enormous uh, discoveries. Um, discoveries that will change uh, the way we uh, think of the past, um, not only the Neolithic period, but in general, how we um, assess um, our development, the human civilization uh, in general. Um, and since um, some of the things or most of the things these people um, achieved uh, almost 12,000 years ago, uh, are um, all um, uh, revolutionary um, uh, changes. I decided to call um, this presentation the Neolithic revolutionaries of um, Anatolia, even though some researchers don't like the word uh, revolutionary um, in certain contexts. I will talk about that as well. So uh, the Neolithic hunter-gatherers with a sedentary lifestyle uh, we're facing here. Um, it is usually um, uh, abbreviated as PPNA and PPNB, uh, two uh, periods. Um, this is 10,000, 8,000 BC uh, PPNA, and the PPNB is the 8,000, 7,000 BC. And then during that time, uh, they have no pottery. Uh, and, um, and then uh, the following period is still Neolithic, but it is called um, Pottery Neolithic. That is 7,000 and 5,500 BC. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, previous uh, periods that are called uh, Paleolithic, uh, Mesolithic, and then you have Neolithic, and then following Calcolithic and Bronze Age. I don't want to um, continue with the uh, with the um, newer um, time periods, but these are the time periods that we are dealing with. What we need to keep in mind, uh, first of all, is that um, the Neolithic uh, is different in different parts of the world. So when we say free pottery Neolithic A, 10,000, 8,000 BC, we're talking about um, the Middle East, um, Southeastern Anatolia, uh, the Levant. Uh, we're not talking about uh, the um, Indus Valley or China or, um, or Africa. Uh, this is um, in, in different parts of the world, they had their own Neolithic uh, during different time periods. Um, this area was mostly studied by um, scholars um, in the um, 18th, 19th centuries. Uh, but one of the most prominent um, studies uh, uh, were done by um, Gordon Child. Uh, he was an Australian Marxist archaeologist, and um, he, um, based on his studies, not really archaeological studies, but um, uh, his own studies, uh, he established that uh, riverside settlements and fertile um, crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates was the perfect geography for the um, for a sedentary lifestyle. Uh, and the first Neolithic uh, people started to settle in those uh, areas, um, learned um, how to uh, work the land, uh, and they were the first um, uh, villagers 
um, settled villagers. And then um, they, after a certain uh, time period, they took the sea routes to sail to northwestern Anatolia, and then all the way up to um, Chanakale, the Dardanelles, and then um, they proceeded to the uh, west. And um, they established um, the settled life in Europe around 3200 BC. Um, you know, based on uh, um, the information available during his time, he didn't do so badly, but um, if he lived now, uh, he would have been embarrassed uh, by what he um, proposed. Um, Chatalhuk um, was a huge uh, discovery, uh, again, um, early uh, during 1950s and late 1950s and early 1960s. Um, a team of Brit British archaeologists, um, just by um, coincidence, discovered this area, David French, Alan Hall, and then um, James Mellard. Um, and uh, they, James Mellard started the excavations in 1961. I have here a website for the Chatali project. It's an enormous uh, wealth of information. Um, I would definitely recommend that you go and uh, check it out. And then um, I would also encourage you to go to Wikipedia to um, read a little bit about James Mallard. He was quite an adventurous person. Um, he uh, very badly discredited himself um, towards the end of his career uh, in Turkey. And um, he was banned um, from uh, the side. Uh, but I'm not going to go talk about it too much. It's irrelevant. Uh, he did something uh, extraordinary by um, discovering the site and starting excavations. Um, I guess the most important two names that uh, we have to praise uh, for discovering earlier Neolithic in southeastern Anatolia, um, somewhat uh, uh, to the north of the uh, proposed um, Fertile uh, Crescent uh, are Robert J. Braidwood and Khaled Chambel. Um, Braidwood um, excavated and did researches uh, in northern Iraq um, and, and Syria. Uh, he knew a lot about the earlier Neolithic, uh, and then um, he um, uh, met Haled Chambel, um, a Turkish archaeologist, and they um, did some surveys in uh, southeastern Anatolia uh, together. And he, uh, Braidwood, predicted uh, a primitive village type of settlement um, um, was uh, in that area and uh, that um, could be very important. And Haled Chambel, uh, knowing the area very well, um, established uh, that it was uh, uh, prudent to start um, excavations at Chayana um, pre pottery B in Neolithic site in 19. Um, sorry, this is supposed to be 1964, not 1694. Uh, they started excavations in 1964. Um, just jumping uh, over um, some time period between um, 7,500 and um, 7,400 uh, in thereabouts, uh, PPNA collapses. Uh, especially, this is um, um, visible um, at Chayan. Large buildings, temples disappear, social unrest. Um, there is, um, uh, there are uh, traces of um, uh, fires, uh, maybe climate change also, um, maybe uh, variations in production um, and self-sufficiency. Something happens and uh, the PPNA collapses um, at uh, Chayona. And what comes after is a real, um, revolution, uh, which we will talk about later. Um, now we need to talk about um, Harald Hauptmann, um, a German archaeologist um, um, excavated at Norshantepe. Uh, again, uh, even um, somewhat uh, more north 
um, of um, the fertile uh, crescent. And together with him uh, came Klaus Schmidt. Uh, and slowly we're coming down to um, what we wanted to talk about. And Mehmet Özdan uh, was an assistant uh, of Halit Chambel. So they all worked together in that um, uh, area. Uh, the, uh, the excavations and discoveries made in that area uh, have historical, philosophical, and theological implications. We have to um, keep that in mind when we look at the object. Now, when we um, talk about um, revolutionaries, um, we don't mean uh, revolutionaries in the sense of um, our day and not even the French um, revolution or uh, uh, industrial revolution, uh, but maybe industrial revolution. Because um, if it were not uh, that person who uh, wouldn't put up with um, uh, the simple uh, transistor, uh, and if they didn't, <laughs> Um, uh, tried and, and find a different way and um, invent an integrated circuit, uh, we wouldn't have uh, uh, the electronic appliances that we use during 1980s and 90s. And uh, if it were not uh, the person who didn't sit um, as a complacent uh, uh, person and, and uh, invented the microchip and uh, microprocessor, we wouldn't have the comp uh, computer technology that we have today. These are all um, revolutionaries who um, uh, thought outside the box and, and, and they um, simply wanted to change something. And, and this is human nature. Uh, and this is what we are going to see in the uh, following presentation. So this is the um, famous um, uh, fertile um, crescent. As you see um, in this map, um, it is taken uh, uh, stretched uh, to the north. Uh, in, in earlier uh, maps, you would only see uh, this area. Uh, you wouldn't see Gebekli uh, Tepe, for instance, um, within the um, uh, fertile crescent. Uh, but here we see um, Gebek de Tepe, uh, Halan Chemi, Nawali Chori, Chatal Huyuk, and all the others. Um, as some people uh, claim Gebek de Tepe, the, um, uh, um, the beginning of time, uh, the, uh, the oldest um, site uh, for human civilization, those are all made up uh, uh, assumptions uh, by an, an unqualified uh, commentators. Um, but um, the, the idea, uh, the um, fertile uh, crescent is about to die. Uh, yes, um, the, uh, the area between the two rivers um, called Mesopotamia, which is actually uh, which means actually uh, the land between uh, the two rivers um, was really important. But um, now we have examples of human activity that are much more advanced than um, those that we um, saw um, in, in the lower part of the um, uh, Fertile Crescent on either east or West. Um, here we have some uh, another map that um, shows uh, other uh, Neolithic sites. Gebek de Tepe is, of course, uh, the focus of everyone nowadays, but Nevali Chori uh, was really important during 1960s, 70s, and 80s. And uh, Halan Chemi during uh, the same time uh, was extremely important. Um, Jan Hassan, uh, Ashik Luhuk, um, uh, Hajilaj, uh, and of course, Chatal um, um yielded enormous uh, artifacts uh, that show uh, the development of 
human civilization. Um, if you haven't been uh, to Ankara, the capital of uh, Turkey, um, you have lost a lot, I would say. Um, during my pre previous presentations, um, I uh, mentioned the name of the um, Anatolian Civilizations Museum um, at Ankara. It's, it's an incredible museum where you would see the historical development of uh, human civilization uh, by the date. Uh, in that sense, it is the museum that anyone and everyone who is interested in history should visit. Uh, now we have a second museum that I um, will talk about later. And here is another map that um, shows more uh, Neolithic sites um, excavated uh, in Turkey. Um, one of the um, uh, most prominent um, scholars um, in uh, Neolithic is uh, Mehmet Özdan, uh, Professor Emeritus. Um, he uh, gives talks uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and, and each time he talks, uh, it's like um, pearls uh, are springing from his mouth. You learn so much um, as he talks. Of course, um, he studied with um, some giants and, and of course he uh, excavated in so many different places and um, and, and now he is not being shy to share his information. Um, this is one of his talks um, called Re-Identifying the Neolithic. Um, he says nearly 3000 Neolithic sites have been excavated in Europe. Uh, and there is very little chance of come across, coming across any surprises. However, we know very little about Anatolia except for the fact that the most important role of Anatolia is in the Neolithic period. So um, just um, before the talk, uh, we were just um, chatting and we said we focus mostly Greek and Roman archaeology. And um, Greek and Roman archaeology simply blinded us. And this brings up um, a, a, a memory of mine. Uh, when I first came to Canada, I uh, noticed that uh, the um, uh, the information or the scholarship uh, about the Greek and Roman uh, archaeology um, was rather primitive. And, and I was surprised and I was talking to um, uh, our um, good friend, um, James Russell, a professor emeritus of archaeology from UBC. And he said, it's, it's really surprising that um, people uh, simply repeat the information of 1960s and uh, uh, 50s uh, about the um, Greek archeology span or uh, Roman archeology. span uh, They seem to be oblivious of the Hittite culture and the Bronze Age um, uh, Anatolia um, and maybe Assyrian, uh, Mesopotamian uh, Bronze Age is known a little bit better but um, people seem to be um, completely oblivious of the Hittite and uh, earlier uh, time periods in Anatolia. And, and Jim was really um, um, nice uh, and, and candid uh, in his replies. Well, mostly the Hittite uh, sites in Turkey were excavated by German scholars and they wrote in German and we bloody didn't know um, uh, German and we couldn't read what they read, uh, what they wrote. That was really curious. And, um, a, you know, language barrier um, could hinder uh, people from improving their knowledge uh, about history uh, and changing things um, uh, would take so much time um, until somebody decides to translate um, um, some of the scholarship um, produced by excavators and archaeologists that wrote in a different language. Anyways, uh, when we assess uh, material or um, information, uh, we have to keep in mind uh, that uh, there can be 
other information that we haven't had access to um, uh, read and learn. We have to pay attention to that. So in uh, his uh, presentations, uh, Mehmet Özdan talks about all the different Neolithic sites in Anatolia and the, um, uh, the contribution of those uh, cultures, um, how the um, stone foundation buildings were developed and how um, uh, water insulation uh, was developed, um, how they created um, uh, baked clay uh, tiles uh, during uh, the second phase of the Neolithic period and how they developed uh, stairs uh, during that time. Uh, and he also talks about uh, conceptual um, assert assertions uh, without archaeological evidence. And he um, says that Gordon Child um, proposed natural environment, domestication of sheep, goat, barley, and uh, wheat at river sites, and uh, proposed the mother goddess uh, concept uh, as a religion. Um, this is also from uh, one of his presentations uh, during the excavations in a site called Domstepe. They discovered um, that an uh, architectural structure thought to be uh, seven, eight thousand years old had more than one story and a balcony. So um, this is, I believe, this is not just a model, uh, and because the same thing. Uh, is painted on a jar. And here is a color photo of the same jar. This is really interesting. You have a um, wooden structure, most likely, uh, quite elaborately uh, painted, even with some storks on the roof. Uh, so uh, we're talking about um, six, uh, seven, six, or uh, fifth uh, millennium BC. Uh, people uh, really um, uh, have improved um, their living um, conditions. Um, Chayanu um, is, uh, again, one of the most important sites. Um, and they excavated almost all of it in 19 seasons. Almost 4,500 square uh, meter area uh, has been uh, uncovered. Uh, the social structure was completely um, uh, unearthed. And, um, and they, um, they believe that um, the uh, PPNA um, was prominent, but um, towards the end of PPNB, um, there was some kind of a social unrest. It was not an invasion. Uh, it was not a total um, destruction. There are not, there are not um, uh, mass graves. Um, so individual graves um, continue, um, but um, something happened and they um, destroyed uh, the existing uh, buildings and moved um, to the site, to the west, and, um, and rebuilt. Um, the earlier buildings are round. Uh, later, um, they um, start uh, to um, use grill. Uh, plans and then um, channeled uh, plans and they used cobbles uh, to pave uh, the um, the floors um, and then they uh, created cell type um, buildings um, for uh, individuals and um, uh, in some areas they had large rooms uh, during the PPN period. Um, the graves are a great source of information about the social st uh, stratification of people. Uh, first of all, um, coming up uh, with the idea of uh, burial, burying uh, the uh, deceased, that was um, a huge um, uh, change and development in uh, the human civilization. Uh, the value of um, ancestry, the idea of uh, respecting the the, uh, the debt, and 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 
um, choosing a spot to lay the dead body and uh, the first traces of mourning of uh, a lost um, uh, family member or community member or a society member. So that was, um, that is um, one of the uh, most important uh, developments uh, in hu human uh, civilization. And uh, at Chione, um, you don't see destruction. You don't see uh, death by um, uh, impact. Uh, if, there, um, there, if there is death by impact, it's usually between animal and um, humans, but not um, uh, because of uh, social unrest and uh, uprising and uh, people killing uh, one another mostly um, natural deaths. By the way, uh, the life expectancy uh, during this uh, time uh, is between uh, 30, 35. And if a person um, survived um, until his or her 40s, that person would, um, would have been considered uh, old. Um, th these are um, photographs from um, Chatalhuk, uh, the um, second uh, phase or the third phase of the Neolithic uh, period. Uh, this is a completely egalitarian um, society. And, um, and it can even be considered uh, the earliest um, city because um, about 8,000 people lived in, um, in this town. And the sizes of um, the chambers or the rooms are very, very similar. Um, no public buildings, um, uh, all of them uh, are very similar uh, in shape and, and sizes. And um, people lived um, in a, a complete um, egalitarian uh, principle um, as far as uh, the excavations have revealed so far. Um, and um, no more uh, large um, structures, um, whatever you would like to call them. Some people like to call them a, a temple. Uh, others would like to call them um, social structures, uh, gathering places. Uh, in uh, Chatalhuig, <clears throat> um, there are um, some uh, small areas uh, that people ornamented with um, bull's horns, for instance, as you see here. Uh, and then they painted their uh, walls. Now, what is interesting about all these places is that um, after a while, maybe after the um, inhabitants of these um, uh, rooms died, they buried them. And, um, and it's good that they did that. Um, we don't exactly know, or the uh, excavators don't exactly know why people buried these um, houses, but um, the fact that they buried them um, uh, has been extremely helpful uh, for the excavators um, to find out more about these uh, places. For instance, um, these uh, wall paintings would have not survived um, had they been exposed to um, the conditions of the weather and, and, and air and, and other um, hazards. So um, these are all buried uh, sites. Um, the mother goddess um, concept is so widely accepted and so widely um, known that until um, the recent finds, nobody challenged it. This is one of the most famous um, so-called mother goddess um, statues at the um, Anatolian Civilizations Museum in Ankara, found um, in Chatalhuk. Um, and uh, recently in 2016, they found another one. Uh, I don't know if this um, uh, was um, seen in the Western uh, media, but uh, it's a very well-known um, uh, artifact uh, in Turkey, 
And um, this one is again from the Anatolian Museum, uh, so Anatolian Civilizations Museum, um, excavated um, during 1980s. And here is another one. Now, uh, with the uh, discoveries um, at um, Göbekli Tepe and in other uh, areas, uh, people uh, have started to question if they should call um, these statues uh, a mother goddess representation or not. So, um, Göbekli Tepe, of course, um, has uh, become one of the um, well-known archaeological sites in the world. Um, in 2018, it was declared UNESCO World Heritage um, Site. Um, in uh, 2019, the Turkish government declared um, uh, 2019 the year of um, Gebekli Tepe. Uh, in 2020, uh, almost 200,000 people visited. In 2021, despite five months uh, closure due to pandemic, uh, 567,000 visitors um, went there. And 2020, during the first eight months of the year, uh, almost 500,000 people uh, visited. Um, in the last four months, uh, in the last two months, I'm sure people um, continue uh, uh, to um, going there and uh, uh, marveling uh, the uh, structures um, at uh, Göbekli Tepe. Um, the uh, structures um, are uh, like the Russian dolls, uh, as you see. Um, one, two, three, four enclosures. Uh, there can be even more. Uh, so this one is the first, the second one, the, uh, the third one and the fourth one. Um, and, and as you see, um, they started large and then um, they um, uh, continue to build in it. Um, when you look at the, um, the area uh, that they decided to build um, these um, structures, uh, it's, it's a hollow um, area. It's a lowland. It's not on top of the hill, but it's, uh, it's a hollow um, part of the, uh, the hill. Um, they um, learned how to uh, built walls, but they didn't know how to support the walls. So they had to build in uh, uh, by digging the ground and using the, um, uh, the earth uh, to support uh, the walls. And later on, they came up with the um, stone pillar ideas, but previously they used wooden pillars. And, uh, and then uh, depending on uh, the uh, importance uh, and the purpose of the structure, uh, they even created, developed more techniques to uh, make the buildings uh, more um, durable. Uh, that's why they have uh, multiple um, um, walls. Um, this is um, a photo from uh, um, one of the earlier um, uh, excavation uh, times uh, of the um, um, Göbekli Tepe. As you see, this part is the top uh, of the hill, and this is uh, rather uh, the lowest part uh, of the hill. Uh, and then um, you have, they discovered that um, there were um, settlements uh, in different parts of the uh, hill. As you see, the whole area is actually quite large. And, um, and um, when they started excavations in um, 1996 by um, Klaus Schmidt, uh, uh, they um, found the, the most important um, site where um, they uh, excavated a, a large public building, and uh, Klaus Schmidt immediately declared that it was a temple, uh, the earliest temple 
And then they continued to uh, excavate and then they found more and more and more chambers similar to the first one that they discovered. And then um, slowly the rhetoric um, changed and, um, and then uh, they decided to uh, do uh, more analysis and more uh, drills uh, in different parts of the hill to see what was going on. Um, one thing that they didn't pay attention to uh, was uh, the protection at that time. They excavated, everyone was so excited. Um, they were uh, unearthing, um, never seen before um, artwork, um, if you would like to call them. And then, you know, not to mention the, um, the architectural um, advancement uh, of uh, the people of Göbek de Tepe or the people of um, Chayon and uh, all the other uh, earlier site, uh, sites um, in the Fertile uh, Crescent and in the Levant, uh, but the artwork, uh, the pillars, uh, the T-shaped uh, pillars uh, were all um, carved um, um, various um, um, animals, um, images. Uh, they were all mostly wild animals and, and interestingly, most of them are male. And, and they made sure that you see that it is a, a, a male representation. Um, after a while, they um, noticed that the, um, the uh, impact of uh, the weather conditions were too harsh and uh, was too harsh and they um, decided to uh, protect the, uh, the sites. And um, they um, uh, had a competition, a design competition, and they came up with um, these uh, ideas. As you see, this area uh, uh, has a different um, covering and uh, this one is the, uh, the most famous one. Um, even though um, it looks quite uh, interesting, um, the excavators now um, don't like it because um, uh, it, is, uh, it is not prudent enough. They haven't taken into consideration uh, the ongoing excavations and um, they keep finding um, artifacts and there is no way you can ex extend this covering. Uh, this is a permanent covering. Either you're going to give it up um, or um, and, and put a different one because excavations now continue in this area. And as you see, uh, they have other excavations going on in this area and there will be um, more excavations. And, and the worst thing is that as the uh, limestone uh, T-shaped pillars um, uh, are exposed to uh, the weather conditions, the, uh, the drawings, uh, the sculptural uh, elements on them, um, unfortunately uh, deteriorate. And um, if, if they don't protect them, um, they will completely um, be erased uh, by the weather conditions. Um, these um, T-shaped um, uh, pillars, uh, some of them, not all of them, uh, some of them um, were carved um, with uh, uh, the images of various animals, um, a vulture, um, uh, some other um, animals, and mostly wild animals. And as you see here, uh, this is when it was first uh, excavated. This is when it is, um, this is a recent photo. Uh, as you see um, how um, uh, badly uh, the, uh, the freezes uh, have been deteriorated. Um, and then uh, uh, there are other pillars um, on which uh, you have uh, bulls and uh, snakes and uh, foxes. And uh, here and here's another one uh, with a fox. Maybe it's incomplete. Um, they don't um, uh, finish the details, maybe. And here is um, a, a mountain line, um, maybe. Uh, and here you have um, some uh, birds and a boar. 
um, there are many, many other um, animals. And uh, there is this one. This is um, uh, a, you know, a, a high relief uh, on one of the uh, pillars, um, most likely um, a panther uh, and, and um, seen from above. And uh, below is um, a boar, and, and the panther is about to um, pounce on uh, the boar. Um, so, you know, people usually ask, um, what did these um, drawings, uh, friezes, um, meant? Of course, um, this is a time period when we have no uh, writing. And, um, Nobody um, uh, left any information regarding the purpose of these buildings and the purpose of the carvings on these uh, T-shaped uh, uh, pillars. Um, and, and it is um, the guess of anyone. Uh, when uh, archeologists um, speak in uh, such reservation, um, the layman, uh, Think that archaeologists don't know anything. Oh, this means that. Oh, that means that. And and uh, um, and due to the nature of um, um, publishing archaeological uh, information um, and and the delays in uh, publishing that information uh, created almost um, uh, an irreversible um, chaos. Um, many people, uh, I call them um, cell phone journalists, uh, visited the site and, uh, and um, took photographs and then uh, videos. And then um, since the official uh, um, excavation reports ha had not been um, published in a timely manner, you saw a lot of um, garbage uh, online. And, and of course, um, the uh, excavators and scholars had to do something about that. And like any uh, disaster, pandemic um, uh, worked really well in that sense. And uh, the, uh, the um, scholars working in these uh, sites uh, gave numerous talks. And, um, and, and for the first time in my, um, um, studies in uh, archaeology uh, and history, um, I feel privileged to uh, listen to those um, scholars in Turkish, in my own uh, mother tongue. Um, in 1965, uh, they uh, found this um, sculpture um, somewhere near Adiaman, uh, again, southeastern Anatolia. Now it is called the Kilisic um, statue, and it was considered an archaeological oddity. Um, they accepted that it was ancient, but they put it in the storage for decades until a member of the Gebek team rediscovered it. Uh, it's, it's an obvious pillar shape or human shaped uh, pillar, as you can see the head, the arms, um, the loin cloth. Uh, most likely um, an animal skin, um, uh, something uh, like a robe uh, wearing uh, here. Uh, and and um, it's, it's an incredible um, statue, but uh, the information of 1960s uh, was so poor, they didn't think it was um, important. And interestingly, when you examine the uh, Gebekli uh, Tepe uh, T-shaped uh, pillars, you see the exact same um, design. Uh, the head is not carved, there is no face, but it is obviously an, uh, a head, and you have the arms, you have a belt, and you have the um, uh, loincloth here. And this is repeated uh, in so many different uh, places in so many different ways. Um, some um, archaeologists um, suggest that this person is holding a, a fox. Um, 
uh, under his arm or her arm. Uh, and um, and um, this, this is just a um, representation of uh, a person. And um, they found um, this statue. This is um, a statue that they um, found uh, in central um, Shanluurfan. Um, as a matter of fact, the largest um, mound in that area is located in the center of uh, the city, Shanluurfan. And, um, and it is uh, um, considered the first full-size representation of uh, a male figure uh, in, in stone. Um, and, and the most important uh, element here is that this person with two hands uh, is holding his, what they would call in um, uh, archeological jargon, his phallus, his penis. Um, everything is very, um, nicely and depicted. Uh, the person is wearing some kind of um, um, a dress uh, with a V uh, collar, a double V collar, and the, the deliberately holding his uh, penis in his hand. Um, now, remember uh, what they discovered um, in Chatal Hug. Um, and, and they had already established the mother goddess um, uh, concept. Um, this came as a complete surprise. And then they found this, and then they found this. Well, actually this one was found uh, earlier and then this one was found. So um, uh, this one uh, was found by a farmer, um, while plowing his field near Gebekli Tepe in 1986. And um, the, uh, the village people, he, he took it to the village and village people made fun of the, uh, the farmer. And um, he didn't know what to do. He decided to put it um, on the back of his tractor and took it to um, uh, the museum. The museum people look, uh, looked at them and they said, oh, this is too grotesque. It cannot be real. It's, and they didn't want to take it uh, first. And then the guy said, uh, I'm too embarrassed. I cannot take this back to my village. Either you take it or I'll just dump it. So they reluctantly um, took it uh, from the, uh, the villager and put it aside uh, until um, Klaus Schmidt and his team um, visited the museum and, and saw it and they said, no, this is not a grotesque um, a statue, but this is a Neolithic period um, art and, and most likely uh, from uh, this region. And then of course they um, excavated, they started to excavate uh, at uh, the Cyberch uh, site uh, and they found this one. So um, more and more male uh, depictions um, start to um, appear. Um, they, uh, in uh, 2019 and 20, um, Professor uh, Nejmi Karl, uh, a, a prominent figure uh, and the, uh, the leading uh, force of the excavations in the southeastern Anatolia, um, and his team started uh, the Stone Hills project and they called it the geography of the great transformation. And, and that's for a reason. And uh, they um, uh, established uh, 12 sites, including Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, Harvets one, the Tepe by, the, by means hill. So Gebekli Tepe, uh, Belly Hill, Karahan Tepe, Harvets one Tepesi, Gürcü Tepe, Kurt Tepesi, Tashla Tepe, Seper Tepe, Ayanlar, Yoğun Burç, Say Burç, Çakmak Tepe, Yeni Mahalle. Yeni Mahalle is the one in um, downtown uh, Şanlıurfa, uh, but all the others are uh, within um, uh, 50, 60, 100 um, uh, kilometers uh, around the um, center of uh, the city of Şanlıurfa. 
Um, and they started excavations in seven um, sites uh, simultaneously. Uh, Professor um, Carl is an extremely um, um, well-educated and um, a well-experienced um, archeologist. Um, early on, he uh, examined the work of the earlier um, excavators and he concluded that it would be uh, inconclusive to focus on one side. Uh, by the way, um, after the death of, uh, unfortunate death of Klaus Schmidt, uh, who started excavations at Quebec du Quebec, um, for a long time, nobody um, took over the excavations. And finally, uh, Professor Nejmi Karo took it over. Uh, and, and he decided that it would be um, illogical to focus on one location. And, and um, they did some surveys and uh, they uh, found um, all these different sites and they started to um, excavate um, uh, on at least seven of them uh, to see um, how this human uh, activity uh, pan out in that uh, geography. And did he do a great job? Um, he himself um, focused on Karahan Tepe uh, and uh, he uh, made some um, extremely, extremely important uh, revolutionary uh, discoveries. So um, the Karahan Tepe uh, excavation started in 2019, and uh, so far they excavated 2,500 square meter um, area. Uh, this is an, an aerial photo uh, of the site. So we are talking about um, uh, an area of um, uh, uh, this much. And uh, they have excavated in this area uh, only. And um, before excavation, this was the, uh, the landscape. You had T-shaped pillars um, everywhere. And with a little um, effort, you could see um, that uh, the uh, site was going uh, deep into the um, uh, earth. Uh, this is from his uh, presentation. Um, uh, earlier uh, this month, they had um, uh, a, a seminar um, or a symposium uh, online, uh, which was hosted uh, by um, the um, Archaeology News um, uh, website or uh, YouTube channel. And uh, it is called Archaeology um, uh, Discussions. Um, uh, more archaeology. Um, so they invited um, the uh, excavators and scholars of um, the Tashtepeler project, the Stone Hills project, uh, to talk about um, their findings in 2021 and in 2022. It's a four and a half hour long um, uh, program. Uh, there are um, some um, scholars uh, who spoke in English. So I, I would definitely recommend that you uh, go uh, on YouTube um, to the link that I, I have here uh, to watch um, the, at least the, the parts uh, with uh, English speaking presenters. You will find their information extremely um, valuable. So, um, at Karahan Pepe, they um, located four major areas of focus. Uh, in uh, this area, they have the quarry, um, stone, uh, um, um, stony uh, part of the um, site. And, and in this area, they uh, uh, project to find um, rather um, small structures like um, houses, small dwellings. Uh, in this area, they um, uh, also expect some uh, public buildings. And in this area, they, dis they made some uh, incredible discoveries that we will just talk about. Um, 
in uh, they started in 2019 in 20 and uh, uh, 21 uh, they had um, a chance to uh, work uh, um, longer than uh, usual. Um, they usually uh, work uh, at these sites uh, three to four weeks, uh, but uh, during uh, 1920 and 21, uh, they worked uh, four or five months. So they excavated um, uh, much more than they could have uh, excavated in maybe uh, 10 years. Uh, so the information uh, that they um, um, gained uh, in the last two years is really um, remarkable. And, um, and, and interestingly, uh, they um, uh, discovered uh, a public building uh, as uh, Mr. Carroll um, would like to describe it. Um, he doesn't want to restrict um, the building uh, to um, a sacred uh, place or a temple, um, but uh, he wants to see it as a public building where people gathered. Uh, what they did um, is still a question um, to be uh, answered, but um, I agree with his um, um, attestation. Uh, not, uh, it's not a temple but it's a public building. Now, what we see here is again, uh, a building with a multi um, layer of walls, one wall, two walls, and the uh, third wall, uh, about 23 meters um, uh, from one, uh, the, the inner wall to the inner wall. It's quite a large um, uh, structure. And uh, you have uh, two level seats uh, around it. And um, mostly it was uh, carved. This is the Northern part. And uh, mostly it was carved on the, um, uh, on the uh, rock uh, bed. And then um, uh, other parts uh, were supported um, with um, uh, stone walls. Uh, and, and they used, again, uh, the same limestone uh, rock slabs uh, to form the uh, seats. Uh, there were two uh, pillars uh, in the middle. And um, this building, uh, together with the um, other public structures, were intentionally buried. Um, how long uh, they survived, how long they served, and uh, when they were um, buried um, uh, is not known. However, uh, they have uh, all the evidence to um, show that they were intentionally uh, buried. So next to this building is a very, very interesting, a smaller uh, structure, uh, completely carved into uh, the, uh, the stone. Uh, and you have some uh, other uh, stone pillars uh, in them. Uh, only one of them, uh, the T-shaped uh, pillar here, uh, was brought from uh, outside, but the rest were carved in the uh, structure here. So it is a plan uh, building. Uh, and, and finally, uh, another structure here uh, that the excavators uh, think uh, is a kind of well um, uh, or a source of uh, water uh, that they um, got uh, water and uh, there is a, a channel, um, somewhat a channel here, um, most likely um, the water coming from here uh, was um, uh, directed into the channel and coming here, filling it out, and there is um, a gate uh, here, uh, a window-like um, gate. So Whatever is happening here, um, they have, they, um, uh, Professor Carroll uh, thinks that um, uh, the person or people were uh, simply um, entering this area because they have some stairs here. Uh, and the way the stairs are um, structured, he believes uh, this is the entrance. And, and then there are some stairs here for people to come out. So um, was it 
um, a kind of initiation process um, or ceremony? Uh, was it something else? Um, it is not known. However, this was a major um, project for the people of um, ancient uh, Karahan Pepe. And it was so significant. It was a communal event. It was um, something that uh, the people of this whole settlement uh, cared about. And they um, gathered and they performed some ceremonies, um, whatever they are, uh, yet to be um, discovered. Um, these are the photos that I took uh, when I visited uh, the site. And this is the building that I was talking about, um, uh, completely carved in the, uh, the rock. Um, it's about three meters uh, from here all the way uh, to the bottom. And you have here um, different um, shape uh, pillars. Here is um, one that you would call T-shaped or um, maybe um, a fox shape uh, pillar. And this one uh, came from outside, but others, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them were carved in um, the uh, rock bed. So uh, when they uh, designed this building, they knew what, were, uh, what they were going to do. And, and the most interesting uh, part is this human face. Uh, and uh, from the goatee, um, they presume that it's a male figure. And, uh, and they also feel that um, uh, there are uh, some carvings uh, in this area uh, that suggest that uh, this is the head of a serpent. So it can be a serpent and, uh, and the, the head of the serpent protrudes from uh, the uh, rock. So it is actually part of the structure. It's part of the planned structure. And uh, when they uh, buried this um, uh, area, um, they didn't want to completely forget it. They put um, stone, pieces of stone on top of each pillar. So when they excavated, uh, they, they found these uh, stones and under each stone, um, they discovered um, one uh, pillar. And based on all the male figures uh, and, and um, sculptures that they uh, found, they decided to identify these pillars um, uh, as uh, false. Uh, so at the moment, the, um, the definition is uh, the chamber with eight um, uh, uh, folly. And this is the um, uh, close-up photo of the, um, the male uh, face. Uh, uh, procreating from the um, uh, the rock uh, wall, it's a, it's actually um, uh, limestone um, wall, um, and his mouth is almost open, uh, as though um, he is speaking, uh, and and um, the eyes are very um, uh, nicely uh, defined. And, and a stern face. Um, it's, it's a serious uh, depiction of a male uh, head. Uh, and this is a close up uh, photo of the water uh, or liquid in chamber that uh, I just mentioned. As you see, they um, uh, carved it uh, in a nice way. And then um, they have drawings uh, on the um, side walls. Uh, it's, it's a snake, as you can see here. I have another photo. Uh, the snake continues all the way here. The head is here, and the other one is here. And then you have a fox here. Um, this is a, a photo of the quarry, um, a, a T-shaped pillar. Uh, they uh, almost finished carving it. And it's, it, it was um, almost ready to, um, to go, but um, it was left here alone. 
And just for you to uh, appreciate the size, I decided to share with you this photo with uh, three um, excavators uh, on top of it. Uh, again, uh, the uh, layers of the building. So there are uh, 17 pillars um, circling um, uh, in the middle, two large pillars, uh, two levels of uh, seats. Um, this part is excavated in the rock uh, or uh, others uh, were built. Um, there are um, leopards, uh, foxes and vultures. Um, uh, um, drawn uh, on uh, the um, uh, on the pillars uh, on uh, different um, stones and they were um, uh, carved as statues uh, many many uh, animals but more than animals Quebec uh, uh, predominantly uh, yielded um, animal figures and Karan Tebe predominantly yielded uh, uh, human uh, um, statues um, as well as um, animals. Um, what is um, a revolutionary uh, at Karan Tebe uh, in terms of excavation work is that uh, Mr. Carroll um, decided to get um, um, uh, archaeobotanists and archaeozoologists uh, involved. And uh, from the beginning, uh, these two um, uh, disciplines uh, got also involved. And, uh, and their contributions will be extremely valuable. They already started to contribute, but uh, later on, uh, their discoveries will be extremely uh, valuable. Um, this is a reconstruction of uh, this public building at the moment. Uh, they can always change uh, this reconstruction in time. Um, so um, what is interesting here is um, it took a while for them to discover um, uh, architectural uh, techniques or uh, civil engineering um, techniques. Um, first round buildings and then uh, rectangular uh, buildings. This is a pattern that you see in many different uh, Neolithic sites um, across the uh, region. Um, it took a while for them to uh, figure out how to support um, the, the corners uh, and um, build a roof on top of um, a rectangular or square um, uh, structure. Uh, the round structures uh, were difficult um, to um, create chambers uh, within. Um, they were either very small uh, or very uh, large. However, uh, when they um, discovered um, the technique to um, uh, create uh, corners, and, and uh, built uh, square or rectangular uh, buildings, they um, were able to create chambers, um, sub chambers within uh, each um, uh, room. And, and this way um, they discovered the, the room, multi-room uh, structural idea. And these are uh, early um, experiments of uh, the uh, rectangular um, chambers. As you see, there are one, two pillars uh, here. Uh, there is a corner here, like a kitchen, and um, or another area here, uh, a utility um, area. Um, um, not much known uh, what the purpose was. Uh, the same can be uh, seen here. Uh, here you have four pillars. One, two, three, four, uh, and two uh, um, seats, uh, again, carved on the uh, rock bed. Uh, here, um, they used, um, again, uh, limestone uh, slabs uh, for, the, uh, for flooring. And uh, so this, this area was um, purposefully 
um, chosen because of the uh, the limestone uh, formation. Uh, there was uh, enough uh, material for them to build uh, and improve their building um, skills and techniques. So this is um, the uh, the special um, uh, three meter deep uh, chamber that I was talking about with uh, phallus uh, eight uh, uh, phalluses. Um, this is uh, the earlier uh, part of the excavations. This is um, uh, from the side, uh, as you can see, it was um, intentionally uh, filled and uh, in certain parts, they used um, clean uh, uh, earth uh, and, and, and other times they used all kinds of rocks and uh, uh, boulders to uh, fill it up. And you can imagine um, how much work, how um, uh, difficult uh, it must have been for them to uh, fill in uh, these chambers and, and even the larger one. And this is um, just to give you a perspective of the size of the, uh, uh, the pillars. Uh, and this building and the um, uh, buildings um, uh, attached to it uh, yielded so many um, human um, uh, sculptures. It's just unbelievable. Uh, Mr. Carroll um, doesn't want to believe uh, that uh, it was a, a direct vertical um, hierarchy society, which means um, uh, there was a, a king or uh, an administrator or a ruler uh, that dictated uh, others, uh, but it was a communal um, uh, society. Uh, vertical and horizontal hierarchy survived at the same time. Um, there was some kind of a ritualistic life rather than uh, a religious uh, life. People, um, the smaller chambers, uh, housing areas, uh, as they call them, uh, seem to be uh, same size. Uh, there are people uh, more real. Um, privileged than others. How, how do they know that? Uh, from the graves in different parts of the Neolithic excavations. During the, um, uh, the um, uh, pre-Neolithic A uh, period, uh, there are uh, graves that um, uh, contain uh, with wealth uh, and they contain wealthy um, items and then um, graves uh, you know with nothing significant in them that shows uh, us that uh, there was some kind of a stratification uh, within the society but it was not um, uh, an overlord uh, or um, uh, more privileged but uh, not uh, in terms of social structure. Um, accumulated wealth or position based on um, their position within the uh, community uh, and uh, a lot of um, sculptures. Here is another uh, figure. Um, his follows is really uh, visible as you can see. Uh, the arm um, can be seen here um, holding uh, his belly, maybe, uh, and, and in a sitting uh, form. Um, here is another one uh, with um, some kind of um, an, an, an animal um, depiction in the front, uh, a loincloth. Uh, uh, fingers are um, very uh, nicely depicted, only although it's only four fingers here. And uh, on the other side, you have two foxes. Uh, here is another one. This one uh, they uh, excavated this year. Um, as you can see, this figure is uh, similar to the classic one that I showed you found um, in Adiyaman and um, the, what was considered an archeological oddity. 
uh, no more. Uh, and this one is uh, even more interesting. There is a kind of snake uh, carved um, on the front side of the figure. Uh, this is really uh, interesting. Um, a human uh, figure uh, carrying um, a leopard uh, on his back. Uh, and, and the leopard is showing uh, his teeth uh, completely. Um, it's not like it is um, attacking the human, uh, but it's a kind of um, depiction that um, shows us uh, that human can uh, live with uh, wildlife, uh, maybe, uh, or human can um, somehow uh, use the white life in uh, his favor. Um, here is another um, sitting figure and another animal, um, hard to describe uh, which one, uh, maybe a lion. And they also found a, a female uh, figure carving. And it's, it's difficult to um, um, explain what's going on. Um, uh, is it a um, birth giving uh, process or um, a different uh, process? Uh, the excavators um, have not come up with any um, uh, explanation. And many, many um, human faces, uh, mostly showing the teeth. Uh, interestingly, they were found uh, in the, the filling uh, and um, their noses, almost all of them um, lost their noses intentionally. The excavators believed that they uh, were broken intentionally and uh, they were uh, placed in niches facing the wall. So um, when they buried uh, the uh, public building, uh, they buried it with uh, all the um, uh, sculptures. Uh, here is one with uh, two hats and, um, and then they have um, stoneware. Um, and the stoneware, um, if, if you uh, look at the shape, uh, it's, it's very symmetrical. Um, they not only carved it in the most uh, perfect uh, symmetry, but they also ornamented uh, the outside. Uh, now, what, what we have to think uh, about um, these uh, artifacts is uh, the development of uh, human uh, civilization. So um, they solve um, their uh, dwelling problems. Um, they chose that uh, geography um, because of the abundant source of material um, to build. Um, and then um, we call them hunter-gatherers. Um, that means they uh, were able to hunt enough um, uh, animals uh, to, um, to eat. And they uh, were able to gather um, uh, um, some edible uh, food uh, uh, or, or plants uh, in the geography that they live. Um, what makes these people uh, different from the uh, other Neolithic sites is that they developed a taste for art. And they developed um, a, a technique to create art. And uh, they uh, chose to uh, use material from different places. Uh, for instance, uh, these um, carved um, stone um, ware, uh, the, the material um, does not exist in uh, the location of um, Karante. It is important. So they had connections. They 
well, there was some kind of a, 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 some kind of a trade uh, from one region to another. So they were not as primitive as uh, we had been thinking that uh, they were. And here are some uh, stone um, plates. Um, many of them are broken and they were laid around the seats in that uh, large uh, public building. And as I mentioned, uh, they started um, uh, at this site for the first time, um, uh, archaeobotanical um, studies. And uh, Jeren Kabukchu is um, the um, uh, archaeobotanist. Um, uh, I think she's um, joining out of London. Uh, and um, they um, uh, are looking to find um, traces of uh, turpentine, pistachia, uh, wild almonds, lentil, wedge, and other uh, ligaments and also wild rye, wheat, and other uh, poikiae. And um, from the beginning, uh, they uh, processed 3,000 plus liters of excavated earth and, um, and archaeological, archaeobotanical uh, material. And uh, one fourth of uh, the material um, has been analyzed so far. So for the first time, uh, a multidisciplinary um, uh, work uh, is conducted at Karantepe. Uh, so it is um, some revolutionary um, uh, processes um, have been adopted um, at this site. Um, the, the third site that I'm going to talk about uh, is um, Cyborg. Um, this uh, site is excavated by Dr. Elem Özdan. Um, uh, and this is uh, one of the most challenging sites because um, there are three uh, different uh, locations that they um, started work, but the most important uh, location is actually in the middle of the modern village. Um, uh, there is a, this site, as you can um, uh, remember, uh, Karantepe had a quarry, and uh, the quarry area uh, looked very similar to this one. Uh, they have um, a mound here and another mound in the middle of the, uh, the village. What they found here um, uh, startled everyone. Um, you see this is in the middle of the village, and um, they found all kinds of tools, um, uh, mortar uh, and, and um, uh, axes, uh, knives, and these incredible statues uh, or um, wall carvings. Uh, again, uh, a, a man, um, a human representation, uh, left hand uh, is over the belly and the right hand holding the fowls. Um, uh, flanking on two sides, uh, two leopards. Uh, to the left is um, a naked uh, uh, person, uh, male most likely, and holding uh, most likely again a snake uh, uh, facing um, a bull. Um, and, and, and finally, um, uh, the work of uh, Fatma Shahin um, in um, 20, 2021 and 2022, and they um, both did some uh, surveys in the area and they located these sites. Um, uh, uh, Paleolithic uh, period, uh, caves and um, under rock um, um, uh, areas and um, uh, PPNA uh, Neolithic, and uh, then they have a trapping uh, and hunting sites. You see how many sites they have um, uh, determined. It's it's amazing. 
And, um, and they also started, uh, Fatma Shahin became uh, part of an excavation team at uh, the site called Chakmak Tepe. Shanlurfa is here, um, Gebek Tepe is somewhere here, and Karan Tepe is um, somewhere here. So um, even though the heri this area looks um, um, mountainous and uh, rocky formation, it is supported uh, by this huge um, arable land. Uh, and and uh, this is one of the uh, most uh, fertile land that you can find in that uh, area. So uh, these sites, even though they are um, somewhat uh, far from the uh, farming land, they're not too far uh, from um, the herbal uh, land. So Chakmak Tepe is here, Quebec Tepe is here, and Karahan Tepe is here. And um, uh, you see, uh, this is the, uh, the, the flat land, the arable land, and all these sites are around the uh, flat land. This is really interesting. And then, of course, uh, you have uh, one of the most important sites, Nevali Chori. Um, somewhere here. And this is um, most likely uh, an older uh, site than uh, Karahan Tepe and Gebek Tepe. And they think that it's a pre-pillar uh, period uh, structure, yet you have um, the holes here, um, most likely um, supporting uh, wooden uh, pillars. Uh, there is a lot to um, talk about. Um, Yutaka Miyake, um, a Japanese archaeologist, uh, is part of the team uh, at Chakmak Tepe. And um, he speaks uh, fluent Turkish, uh, very, very uh, admirable uh, that you know, he learned uh, the Turkish language and um, did his presentation in Turkish, uh, very, very um, uh, remarkable. And this is a reconstruction of um, one of the um, smaller um, buildings that they uh, excavated. And uh, literally thousands of um, tools, uh, all kinds of uh, cutting, drilling um, uh, tools. Um, and um, this is another site uh, called Harbetsuan Tepesi. Uh, again, another Japanese team um, uh, excavates uh, here. Um, their um, findings are uh, also remarkable. They think that this is a smaller settlement, uh, not too far from, um, this is the, the Haran uh, plain, the lower uh, land, uh, the arable land. Um, and it's not too far from Karahan Tepe, so this is where the um, uh, Harbetsuan Tepe is located, and uh, it is visible. Um, Karahan Tepe is visible, and on a beautiful day, they say, uh, Gebek Tepe is also visible. So they are uh, within um, reach, uh, but um, that, that tells us uh, the, the number of people uh, who settled in that area uh, and how densely populated uh, it was, uh, despite the belief that uh, most of these people uh, lived uh, near um, river sites or lake sites. And uh, they also found a lot of tools here. Interestingly, um, they use flint stones uh, for various uh, purposes and, and obsidian. Um, most obsidian came from central um, Anatolia. Uh, however, uh, there were different kinds um, quality um, uh, obsidian. And um, one of the uh, largest um, uh, obsidian um, exporting uh, site uh, is um, Hasanda in central uh, Anatolia, but they didn't like the obsidian from uh, that site, and um, they mostly imported uh, obsidian from a different site, a smaller site, but the quality was uh, much better. 
uh, in Harbets one, uh, they uh, excavated this statue. It's a um, centimeter um, high statue. And the head missing, uh, apparently it's a sitting man uh, with his phallus visible, they say. Um, I, I really cannot make out uh, the figure here, but this is um, an important uh, find for the Harbets one uh, uh, site. That's why I wanted to share it with you. And finally, uh, the um, uh, Paleolithic period open air settlements, Shanlu uh, Papyrus Historic Survey project um, that um, Fatma Shahin that I just mentioned, um, Dr. Uh, Fatma Shahin uh, runs this project. Um, they um, established open air settlements, cave settlements, slope settlements, hillside settlements, and trapping sites in this area. And here are some photos um, from their survey. Um, some uh, um, uh, slope site and uh, cave um, settlement. And most interestingly, the uh, trapping uh, sites. And uh, most likely they were um, running uh, herds of animals into this uh, trapping area. And then uh, the hunt would begin. They are hunter gatherers. Yet uh, they are sophisticated uh, hunter gatherers. Uh, they are not just going out and uh, uh, trying to um, um, kill animals, but they are um, doing organized work um, uh, to um, to hunt. Um, the whole focus is now in the Shanluofa area. However, it's not the only place where you have um, the astonishing finds of uh, the Neolithic period um, come to surface. Um, Kurtik Tepe is uh, worth mentioning. It is not too far, but still out of uh, the Shanluofa area. So Shanluofa is in this area, and Kurtik Tepe is further to the uh, east, uh, not too far from uh, Chayoni and Chatalhuyuk and Nashikluhuyuk are here. Um, it will soon be inundated by the waters of the Ilusut Dam, uh, unfortunately. However, uh, the excavations um, uh, have started in a timely manner and um, it continues. Um, and this is the area where they will be um, digging. And um, the excavations are run by uh, Professor uh, Vejihi Uzkaya. And uh, his team and he uh, have been working very hard. And um, their discoveries are as um, stunning, astonishing uh, as uh, the um, Gebek Tepe uh, region. Um, even though um, they have to do a meticulous uh, work uh, to make sure not to miss anything. Uh, they um, find some uh, incredible uh, items. Uh, over uh, 30,000 items, they say, uh, found at this site. But look at the stoneware and, and the art uh, on them. Uh, no two items are uh, similar. Uh, forget about being same. Uh, they are not um, similar, and the um, uh, the burial chambers are um, enormous source of um, information. Um, they found um, stoneware um, buried with uh, deceased the deceased, and uh, they were broken. Um, others uh, they found intact. Uh, however, the ones that they found in uh, burial chambers were uh, broken, and the broken uh, pieces are missing. They are not uh, in the um, grave. And later on, they found uh, broken pieces um, uh, used as amulets. This is really interesting. Then they have these amulets, and uh, they um, uh, they have uh, no interpretation for them. However, uh, they're all um, uh, different uh, shapes, uh, even though certain 
figures are similar, like this one and this one. Uh, the way they are um, carved, the, the shape of the, um, uh, the stone is different. So um, they meant something yet to be discovered. Um, so the development of dwellings um, and architectural techniques, um, we have a, a clear idea as to how they started and how they uh, developed um, uh, the uh, architecture uh, in that area. I'm not going to go too um, deep uh, into that, uh, but one thing that I would like to mention is what they call a, a terrazzo floor. Um, in places where um, they um, didn't have the rock bed uh, to use as, um, as flooring, um, they imitated um, uh, techniques or they developed techniques to create uh, an insulated water resistant uh, flooring system. So they have rock and limestone. So they were uh, burning uh, limestone uh, to, uh, to create uh, these uh, uh, terrazzo uh, floors uh, everywhere. Uh, it's, it is um, uh, an enormous undertaking uh, according to um, the uh, excavators, but people did uh, achieve that. And um, uh, an unfunny um, story uh, towards the end of my talk. Um, some years ago, this uh, was excavated at Gebek Tepe, and um, uh, even though there was some kind of a protection at the site, um, thieves managed to um, steal this um, sculpture. Um, I don't know if they um, have ever uh, recovered it. I couldn't find that information, but um, uh, it is sad that um, uh, thieves um, targeted this um, incredible um, site. Um, finding uh, leopard uh, depictions on uh, these Neolithic sites uh, was interesting, of course. Um, they believe uh, that leopards were extinct in Anatolia, yet uh, in uh, 2021, um, between 2020 and 2021, um, they um, had this uh, the camera and they located them. So it is really uh, interesting. The leopards uh, uh, continue uh, roaming the uh, steppes of um, Eastern Anatolia. And um, there is um, a Tahterer connection here. Um, a couple of years ago, um, someone from the um, uh, Hajitepe University um, in Ankara contacted my wife and uh, asked um, her if she could help them to um, um, make a, um, a bust or head. Um, um, based on uh, a skull that they excavated uh, at Chayana. Um, and they um, dated it to 9,000 BC. Uh, based on the skull, it was inferred that the person had a slim and petite uh, face. And uh, again, using morphometric methods, tissue thickness in different parts of the head was determined and the shapes and uh, places of soft tissues like the nose, the lips, and the mouth were determined based on the skull measurements, they say. And, 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 and Selma worked on um, this uh, project and, uh, and she sculpted this, sculpted this, this head. And um, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, based on um, Salma's feedback and my observation, um, using morphometric methods and uh, also determining uh, the, uh, the tissue, soft tissue uh, shapes and uh, places uh, by this method, by that method, is um, um, uh, has nothing to do with um, the. Um, the end product, um, 
every now and then I hear that people um, built um, uh, heads and um, busts uh, based on um, skulls. Uh, and, and they talk about um, some um, scientific jargon uh, to explain what they did, but it is actually uh, the rendition is Selma, nothing else. Uh, that's all I can say. And um, she did a great job no matter what. And this is an interesting uh, short video that I will just keep quiet and let you watch. I'll just start it again. Isn't that wonderful? Um, I have some uh, further reading suggestions here, um, especially um, the books of um, Gordon Chow. Um, I read them many, many years ago in Turkish and um, I, I still appreciate them. Um, although um, some of his information is outdated, 90% uh, of his uh, inferences, suggestions, establishments are um, still valid, and um, uh, I simply recommend all of them. Uh, what happened uh, in history is my favorite, and main, a man makes himself um, is my um, second favorite, and social evolution is um, equally um, important. Um, I read them um, uh, with great enthusiasm. Uh, Prehistoric Man by um, uh, Braidwood uh, is very uh, good. I um, admittedly didn't know about this book, but uh, while researching uh, for this presentation, I discovered it is available um, on um, uh, www.gutenberg.org. Um, the website is here, um, so you can download a soft copy and read it uh, online if you like. Um, uh, and I just scanned through uh, it and it looks very, very interesting. Um, and then um, some books uh, by Mehmet Özdoğan and Harald Hauptmann uh, from village to um, cities. Um, it is, um, it looks like it is um, bilingual. I haven't seen this book myself but uh, it has both a Turkish and an English um, title. So I'm hoping that it is a, a bilingual book. It is available on uh, Amazon. And then other books uh, by um, uh, uh, Mehmet Özdan, 
uh, they are all extremely valuable um, sources of information. The, the, the sky is um, uh, almost a national treasure uh, for Turkey and for the world. Um, there are some videos that I recommend that um, you take a look. Um, these are all available on YouTube. Um, Klaus Schmidt, Göbek uh, the the world, uh, the world's oldest temple. Um, of course, um, he would have um, spoken much differently had he lived today. All the same, uh, what he has to say in this video you know, are very valuable. Again, what is Gebek de Tepe in 2014? You can uh, watch both of them and see how he changed his view uh, in time. Uh, there is another um, uh, interview uh, with an English speaking excavator. He's actually the head of the operations right now, Dr. Lee Clare. Um, he's British, uh, but um, he was. Um, uh, included in the team by uh, Klaus Schmidt. He did his PhD in Germany. Um, and, um, and, and his, uh, this interview is extremely um, valuable. Um, you can watch it on YouTube again. And it is uh, recent in 2022. Um, there is a documentary uh, for uh, that called Secrets of Quebec de Tepe. Uh, not too bad, but um, you know, uh, watch it with certain um, reservation. And then, if you would like to know more about um, Chatalhuk, um, Ian Hodder is the person to go to. Um, this is a lecture by him um, uh, entitled "What We Learned from 25 Years of Research at Chatalhuk." Uh, he um, continues to um, talk uh, with uh, some other colleagues, um, Annie Bogart, Claudia Engel, Jessica Pearson, Jesse Wolfhagen. Um, this is from uh, uh, March, 2022, Social Organization of Crop and Earth Management at Chatalhuig. Um, he's a little bit um, difficult to follow. Um, sometimes I feel I don't understand the language that he speaks, but most of the time, if you focus, um, uh, he is an enormous source of information. Uh, British Institute at Ankara has a YouTube channel. Uh, I would definitely recommend that you um, go to that um, channel. Very uh, interesting videos uh, about the British Institute or non-British Institute related um, archaeological uh, sites. Um, Anadolu'nun Kadim Hikayesi, the um, in memorial story of Anatolia, uh, mostly in Turkish, um, some interviews uh, with English speaking people, what completely um, English subtitles. It's a must um, watch um, uh, movie or documentary. And finally, uh, the link here, uh, the Tashtepeler uh, project, uh, the geography of great transformation, the, um, uh, the seminar that I um, just mentioned uh, that um, uh, all the uh, prominent uh, excavators in the um, Stone um, Hills uh, project uh, speak here. Um, finally, uh, again, while going through um, and researching on the internet, I uh, stumbled upon this um, talk um, by Ron Margulis. Uh, he's a British um, communist, I believe, or Marxist. And um, he um, spent quite a bit of time um, uh, at um, Chatalhuik. Um, I think he's part of the team and um, he talked, the, the title of his talk is um, Chayoni and um, Chatavik Revolution and Egalitarianism in Neolithic Turkey. Um, it's, it's a very, very interesting um, talk and then um, discussions uh, follow. And here um, is um, another uh, site. Uh, and these are um, the, the German uh, um, communist uh, organization, I believe. 
they also um, have um, their um, research on uh, the uh, earlier um, social structure uh, and development of uh, human relations uh, from Chayuna to um, Chafalu. Uh, very, very interesting talks. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not recommending any of these books I say here. Look at this. Uh, people who have nothing to do um, with Gubek uh, Tepe and uh, all the other Neolithic sites wrote so many different books. It's just unbelievable. Um, I thought um, we, we had a lot of imposters in Turkey, but many English speaking writing um, imposters out there. Uh, I'm sure you will come across these uh, along the way. I would say, uh, be careful. And then um, again, if you go on YouTube, uh, you have these people, um, Karahan Tepe, they discovered Karahan Tepe. And most likely they went to Turkey um, on tour and they were taken to these sites. I don't think they discovered these sites on their own. Um, look at this Karahan Tepe super civilization. Biggest archeological discovery of uh, 21st century, megalithomania. And then they you know, have other videos. And finally, um, those who um, have uh, Netflix might know about this. Uh, there is this um, uh, series um, called Ancient Colop um, Apocalypse. Uh, the fifth um, chapter uh, is about um, Gebek Tepe. Again, um, I don't know what these people try to achieve uh, by um, um, trying to make connections with um, uh, stars and uh, uh, winter solstices, uh, summer solstices, how the angle of the light hits the head of the sculpture. What are they trying to achieve? I don't understand. But, but I have an idea, uh, of course. Um, uh, we humans don't like change. Um, those who um, uh, are not complacent and try to change what is um, um, available uh, are called revolutionaries. Um, of course, archeologists uh, with their suggestions, um, uh, the way they interpret what they discovered, uh, they speak with certain reservation um, instead of making um, uninformed assumptions and claims, they simply say, oh, we still need to um, research, we still um, excavate further. Um, but then uh, you have um, smart people out there, as soon as they hear the professor says, he doesn't know what it means, they say, ha, stupid, it is such and such. So um, people, um, do a lot of interesting things online. Of course, we all love um, uh, and want to be recognized. And, um, and I can understand that. But uh, unfortunately, internet, the internet is full of um, garbage. Um, at the beginning of my talk, I said uh, the Anatolian Civilizations Museum in Ankara is a must see place. The second must see place is here the Shanlu Urfa um, Archaeological Museum, uh, predominantly and Neolithic. Um, all the finds from Göbekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe and all the other um, uh, stone uh, hill project uh, excavations uh, are um, housed and displayed here. Uh, earlier, um, uh, late last year, early this year, they um, uh, opened uh, a new um, section for Karahan Pepe. Incredible uh, place to visit. And this is just a, a small um, uh, part of uh, what I saw. Uh, um, this is a reconstruction of the, uh, the large um, chamber at Quebec de Tepe.
Yes. Yeah, and um, this is a site in, in um, Shanlurfa, but I'm, I'm going to stop uh, talking here. Uh,